Welcome to AGK Tech Tips. In this video, I will show you how to extend your array with data types. Data types allow you to add logical names to the end of identifiers. This works with any identifier created, including array identifiers. To create a data type, you simply need to use the command type followed by ntype, then list the names and what type of data those names belong to. These are then assigned to the identifier as an extension. And I'll show you what I mean by creating a type now. So if I type in type uh, database objects and end type, because I tend to do it this way around simply because sometimes I forget to type in end type. <laughs> and um, I'm going to give it lots of nice logical names. So s name as string and i age as integer and s address as string. So as you can see, I've created three objects within the uh, data type, um, s name, i age, and s address, and I've assigned these as particular um, types of data. Now the advantage of this is this can now be assigned to any other data um, identifier I create. So in this case, I'm gonna be uh, extending an array. So um, if I type in dim database and I'm just going to give it nine placements or nine index slots, I should say. And then I'm going to say as data base objects. So as you can see up here, I've typed in S name as string, and I've basically assigned the entire database array as database objects, which was defined up here. Now this is useful because it's a great alternative to Sorry, it's a great alternative to multi-dimensional arrays rather than having um, a comma like I did previously, which would be nine comma three. Um, instead, I've just got uh, nine dot s name, um, i age or i address, and these are far more logical to read when dealing with database situations like this. And I'll show you what I mean by uh, basically creating a little um, loop just to uh, um, fill all these lines with random data. So if I just go um, for i equals 0 to 9, and then i temp equals random 4 to 9, and then I'm going to type in uh, temp um, equals, and I'm going to reset it, and for i2 equals 0 to i, this is probably a bit overkill for what I'm doing, but never mind, um, and then temp string it needs to equal temp string add char, I'm just going to select a random character here, uh, 50 to 100 doesn't really matter what the the uh, range is providing it's actually a visible character and then next i2 and now we're going to assign that created string to our database object so database um, i and dot s name so as you can see rather than putting in um, 0 to one or two, um, which I would have had to have done with a multi-dimensional array. Instead, I'm assigning it as .s name, which is far more logical to read. And we're just going to um, assign that to uh, to temp. And next, we're going to create a random age. So database i dot s sorry i h equals random eighteen to eighty. And next, we're going to create a random address. Again, I'm just going to create some random characters and throw it in there. So I temp equals random, whoops, equals random 9 to 30. And then I'm going to go temp string and reset it. And for i2 equals 0 to i temp and temp string equals temp string at char uh, 50, sorry, random, <laughs> that would have been a mistake, 50 to 100. And for i2, sorry, that's next i2. And then database i 
equals um, s address equals temp. So a little bit long winded, but it gets the job done. So next I, and then I'm just going to create a simple for next in loop, well for sync and loop I should say. Uh, and I don't even mean for, I mean do and loop. <laughs> Uh, so I've already just woken up, so my brain isn't quite with it right now. So standard do and loop sequence uh, for i equals 0 to 9. And next i, then in between there, it's print name add database i dot s name and print age add string database i dot i age and I'm sure you can see now how I'm using these identifiers uh, within this program And finally, print uh, address. I've missed the colon up there, and colon space is quite important, otherwise, it's all mashed together. Um, add database dot s address. So basically, we've extended our array. Um, with type extensions, if you want to think about it that way, which I tend to. So it's a bit like um, calling a file file.exe or file.bat. Um, they're all different types, so it's all extensions. So there we go. And we're going to add in one final print. Uh, there we go. And hopefully I've typed it all in correctly. Oh, no, I've typed in something wrong. So line 19, what did I do there? Ah, I put full stop instead of a comma. Let's try that again. And there we go. So a little bit long-winded just to demonstrate this, but you know we've got name, age, and address, and they've all got random data just assigned to it for the heck for no, no particular reason. Um, but as you can see, it's all listed in the field. So you've got name, we've got an age and address, name, age and address, and this is very good for creating a card file stale database. So what I've basically done is create a whole database out of an array and a set of database objects. Um, so array, database, give it a number of indexes and database objects. So I suppose the most logical way of thinking about this is a set of fields within a card database. So you've got the index here which refers to the database record and then you've got um, each particular field contained within that record. So using this method you basically create a very simple um, card system database assigned by index. So there we go. Um, that's how you create a uh, very simple database using a combination of arrays and data types.